I am Kaus Coopen. Before we start, I just want to break down a thumbnail for a previous Need for Speed video I produced called The One Need for Speed to Rule Them All. When you break down what we're actually looking at, none of it actually makes sense. And this thumbnail has remained a bit of a conundrum with myself, the creator, and a lot of people <laughs> who have watched the video. It is an analogy. The hobbits are the games, right? And they're going, what, to the mountain? The ring, I, I put as Game Pass because they were all available on it at the time. And I think that's probably the element that confuses this is because why would they, why would any of this be happening, basically? Who is Gollum in this fantasy Need for Speed parallel Lord of the Rings universe? That one's so obvious. It's Phil Spencer. Precious. In that video, I ranked the three games as follows, a spoiler alert. Hot Pursuit ended up at the back with Heat in the middle and then Unbound just pipped Heat being at the top because of its tech, because of how goddamn amazing it looked on my PC. And that carries right over to the PlayStation 5 version. Now I can't see any performance quality options in the UI at all. I might be looking in the wrong place, but this is one mode and I've been looking on the internet and it's apparently 60 frames per second and 4K. The 60, I can guarantee. At 4K, I'm not so sure about that. Might just be me. And this transition from cutscene to in-engine blew my mind having it all blown up on a larger television. So it was 1080 the last time I looked at it. Also got the most amazingly flexy intro to it. I think of all of the Need for Speed games, giving you access to three beautiful cars. And if you don't choose that Lamborghini Contash, you've got some issues. I actually think I went with that BMW first time round over on PC, so don't take that comment as gospel. My point being, they're an awesome choice of three car, and then you also get the opportunity to rig them up to their top spec, so you get the end game almost feeling with this right at the front, 25 minutes to an hour, and then it does the inevitable and takes it all away from you. We're gonna to get to that in a second. <laughs> You might also be thinking, why are you reviewing a game that came out years ago? Well, this is on PlayStation Extra, and I do want to see how it runs on the PlayStation 5 and get it on the channel as a singular video. The game needs to be spoken about because Criterion Games, founded in 1993, came out with some of the most beloved arcade racers ever seen in the industry. I'm talking about the latter Burnout Games, Revenge, and I'm talking about Paradise. Burnout Paradise was an unbelievably good open world racer that wipes the floor with anything that came after it that obeyed that format, and most of them did. Just to get a tiny, tiny essence of those early games when playing these new Need for Speed, worth firing up these newer titles alone. But something else is occurring with this, and I purposely switched it offline, kind of done with EA, breathing down my neck all the time, and I just wanted to see how bare bones things were if it wasn't talking to the internet. But I was also quite pleased to see there was an option to take everything offline. talk about this aforementioned honeymoon period front end with this amazing car and you have a lot of money also and you kind of third a lot of the time it's not difficult to get out in the top three and the rewards are rolling in and you're just thinking this game actually works really cool it's giving me excellent things and then the door slams shut and you get given a minimal car and all your money taken away you have to talk to Rydell all the time on the goddamn phone which is just the character development and the injection of narrative that's put into this game via the characters got to be some of the most unbearable in the whole of the series. It really has. It's it needs a there needs to be Razzie awards for bad writing. Forsaken is slung in there with that. Nickma! This one is sat right at the top, and I can totally understand how that put loads of reviewers off in the first week of it coming out because that was my memory of it. Okay, game, but it's got X, Y, and Z wrong with it. <laughs> 
I just wanted to cover the camera positions very quickly. The triangle button allows you to cycle through the traditional setups that you would see in the previous games and most other races. But Heat and this one have an action camera position, which means that you get pushed in when you brake harshly. The car will zoom into focus, giving a sort of dramatic, cinematic look to the way the game's playing. Same goes for drifting, it sort of swings out with you. And I grew to like it, and it was my default camera, and I was really pleased to see that they kept it in with Unbound. I think it's going to be a staple with the series going forward. The photo mode is also not terrible. That world does offer quite a lot of variety with location and day and night have vast differences in lighting. So it's cool to be able to experiment, pull it on whenever, even during a race, police chase, all of that. I did come up to the section in the PC version of this game where you lose everything and continue going. I even got the same Mitsubishi, but at that point, it didn't dawn on me how much of a massive task it was to pull the money together to get up through the grades or even purchase a fresh new car. It's ridiculous. And at the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I guarantee this microtransaction accelerator is put in place and this whole process is elongated to force the sale of the aforementioned. I don't even need to look to tell you I'm pretty sure that's the answer. And that's also probably another thing that annoyed reviewers when going online or looking at a pay to win system with a competitive PvP mode. And this is what I want your opinion on. There's no way the guys at Criterion made this game with microtransactions and a PvP loot system in mind. They were just in there to create a really cool, realistic as they could get arcade racing experience within that Frostbite engine. It was EA that comes slithering up and implement these monetization programs and then weave them into the game model. That has got to be the case because I'm a true believer in 90% of the time it being the publishers and distributors that put these processes in and not the base level developers, the guys that put the game together in the first place. <laughs> By all of that moaning, the game does have its moments of complete bliss and glory. And one of them can be found in getting that wanted meter up to at least four, where it starts spawning in different beast vehicles and a helicopter in, and you start getting pursuit vibes. And then things get really hectic where you're smashing stuff off the road left, right, and center. And it totally feels like a current gen burnout game, like for minutes on end. And you're like, yeah, this is worth firing up just for those tiny little snippets of absolute brilliance. Also the risk reward with the money thing and the police and they pulled that from heat as well and I also quite liked it but sometimes it's the last thing you want to do after a rigorous race is have to escape from the cops you're kind of done with all of that and you just want to get your money cashed in. You will be met with a chase straight coming out of your previous race meaning you've got to shake them off and you'll see that the at risk number over at the top right there's a certain amount of tension in here because if you get caught it is all gone and getting caught is damn easy because money <laughs> Poor Eclipse just doesn't get off the line. Damn, that worked! Her bus controlled her vehicle! also saves that horrendous story of the guest cast challenges that pop up once in a while you get the chance to rip round in an Aston P1s there's an awesome skyline and this is a carrot to say look if you keep going through all of this hardship you might actually get to sit in a decent vehicle I've also chosen a female character to play as this time round and the dialogue between the main NPCs and a lot of that story structure is quite different. I was surprised at that. I'm not going to count it as a plus point. And you do get a lovely little synopsis of your vehicle garage when you put it into idle. So here's my advice EA and you've probably still got the IP rights to this just remake Burnout Paradise 
completely from the ground up like the Resident Evil 4 material or Shadow of the Colossus or if you want to push out Burnout Paradise 2 change the city up give everything a nice new lick of paint new music some rock and decent music in there please and when the guys in the suits who are implementing the monetization come upstairs for the meeting just lock the door don't let them in because trust me on the numbers from your loyal fans of the last 15 years who used to like your arcade racers they'll come back and they'll buy it want to close in comments and thank you very much for still staying with me here's your reward ali alberts was named game mvp three receptions 56 yards and a score these Chicago players know how to drink. Do you realize how many cut lefty beaten mouths you just insulted with that imagery? I do. And did you see the oscillation of those graphics on the exhaust coming out of the back of the car there? That was epic stuff. Despite my slating of those cell shaded added doodle graphics, they kind of grow on you a bit. They are another layer of customization and microtransaction, but it looks quite cool when they're in stills and you're rocking the camera around. <laughs> So did not even mention haptics, the mic was on for that footage, you can hear the sort of redundant rattle I'm going to call it. Not enough resistance on those triggers, really disappointing, Returnal still got that crown. What's the order of the fellowship of the best of the need for speed of the ring games? Well it's just switcheroo, heat's still in the middle. But Hot Pursuit's number one now, and Outbound, forget about it. What's Couch Coop? I will see you down there. Yo, pack it up. We going home. Ali Alberts was named Game MVP. Three receptions, 56 yards, and a score. These Chicago players know how to drink. This is during the game. She's at midfield right now, chugging a beer and throwing it back in the crowd. Wow!